when you go to journalism school, one of the first things that you learn is the news determinants. What the news determinants is, it's pretty much a list of what actually makes news newsworthy. It's a list of things that define stories by how close they are to the audience, how important they are, how interesting they are, how involved with money they are. These determinants can make or break the newsworthiness of a story, and a story like this is one that doesn't really tick off any of those boxes except for one. This story that we're covering here today ticks off the peculiarity box, because in journalism it is noted that peculiar stories do indeed usually act as newsworthy once in a while. And when it comes to peculiar stories, stories that you don't think you would actually see, things that catch you off guard, and things that are just plain outright weird and different, I think this kind of takes the cake as one of them so far in this pre-play-in series off-season that we have. Turns out, Nico Hischier is going to the Swiss Army. Yeah, that's really, really interesting. Take a look at this article over here from cbc.ca. Nico Hischier is completing his Swiss military service during the NHL shutdown. He says he is staying in shape as a member of the special program that they have for athletes. The article goes over it early on right here. The number one overall pick in the 2017 draft is fulfilling his military obligation to Switzerland, which has a mandatory 18-week service for men, followed by three-week stints over the next six or seven years. Obviously, different countries are going to have their own military and army regulations. Some countries, especially in Asia, you have Singapore, you have South Korea, etc. You have countries where your men are supposed to go and serve. It's a requirement, it's mandatory conscription, and I'm sure different words are used in different countries, but I didn't actually realize that Swiss people had to go through this, and as a result, it's actually Nico Hischier's turn to serve, as the articles are pointing out. As it says, 18 weeks is the service length right here, as well as three week stints over the next six or seven years, meaning that going into the next few off seasons, we may see three week stints of Nico Hischier going back to the Swiss military and completing his service that way. But for now, it looks like it's a mandatory 18 week course that they're going through right now. Hischier had thought about fulfilling his 18 week service during the season. But with the Devils uncertain when they would return from the pause, it turns out to be the perfect option. One reason I did it was I needed to stay in shape, he says on a Zoom call. I didn't know where to go because gyms weren't open and I couldn't just work out at home. I just didn't have the tools for a good workout there. And honestly, that's not a bad excuse, man. If you've got to work out, where else are you going to get better workouts than the gosh darn military? And when it comes to the safety of the overall Swiss population, that's honestly been pretty fine. Going back to the past few days, Switzerland has only been reporting a few new beer bug cases every single day. Going back to May 5th, they had 28, and then every other day after, it was either less than 100 or sometimes even less than 10. Switzerland is pretty safe when it comes to that whole beer bug situation, so honestly, it makes a lot of sense to go do your service now. The article mentions that Hishir is in a special program for athletes. Although the first four weeks of the classes were held remotely online because of, you know, the beer bug, he is now attending classes to learn emergency medical techniques, among other things, in the mornings and working out with fellow athletes in the afternoon, including some hockey players from the Swiss national team. He is not learning how to march or how to drive a tank, and he's not heading to the firing range to shoot an automatic weapon. The soldiers in Switzerland's professional army do just that. So okay, hold your horses there. Hishir is not going to be the guy out there on the front lines with the, I don't know, name a Swiss gun. Actually, now that I think about it, I can't do that off the top of my head. Switzerland has always been neutral in all these political conflicts, etc. They don't really have the same gun diversity that, let's say, the Americans have with the M1 Garand and the M1911 and all the M1s and the Thompson and the Germans have with the MP40, etc. So, I don't know, Hishier's not just gonna be an army guy. He's not gonna do what the traditional army stuff entails. Instead, 
He says he's getting a uniform, there are rules to follow, he works five days, he goes home, and he returns the following week. He doesn't have a rank just yet, and they didn't do much army stuff yet, although he expects it will increase by the time he finishes in mid-August. The rest of the article here on cbc.ca goes over the New Jersey Devils, Nico Hischier, and how he feels about that season. In fact, there was another Nico Hischier thing that I wanted to talk about here because we're already talking about the guy, let's just bring it up anyway. I saw this tweet over here from Amanda Stein on June 20th, the official team reporter for the New Jersey Devils, when Nico Hischier was asked about potentially being the next captain. He says that's a big, big thing. Obviously, I wouldn't say no, but I think at the end of the day, I'm still a young player. Still got a long way to go and still a lot of things that I don't know yet and need to learn. And that's something that I saw a lot of New Jersey Devils fans absolutely praising the heck out of his year for. And for good reason, too. The guy's humble, the guy's honest, the guy is willing to admit that he needs to get better in order to feel himself that he is worthy of receiving that kind of title. And for the most part, a lot of Devils fans that I've seen have been super adamant that his year should be and probably will be one of the bigger contenders for the captaincy, either him or Palmieri going into the next few years of Devils hockey. This whole captaincy thing is actually highlighted in the CBC article as well, so there's that. But a lot of that does have to do with a lot of the moves that the Devils have been making over the past calendar year. We saw them trade away Taylor Hall for a whole bunch of assets. We saw them trade away their captain, Andy Green, which is why this whole captaincy debate has even brought itself up. But for the most part, it's been a whole bunch of New Jersey Devils who haven't played to the same standard as they had been the most previous season or even before that in the season that had just concluded. The Devils are in contention for another first overall pick here with the Alexi Lafreniere sweepstakes. And I swear to goodness gracious if they actually win again, because they do have some pretty good odds at doing so. It's going to be weird seeing Lafreniere, Hughes, and his year all on one power play together. That's gonna be whack. But as for Nico individually, he is a guy who I can definitely see getting better as the years get on and on and on. He probably will be the captain of this team at some point, and I know his most recent performance of 36 points in 58 games wasn't spectacular, but, you know, everybody on the Devils kind of had the down year. He was pretty good with New Jersey over the past few seasons, even at the World Championships he was really good. It's just a down year is a down year, and that's pretty much it. Next year, I would expect Nico Hischier to reach that 60-point plateau if everything thing goes right, and if he plays with the right line mates, and if the Devils actually do well. I just love the long-term upside that Nico Hischier has, and I remember even a few scouts back for the 2017 draft. I think this was on the NHL's Prospect Show podcast that they have on Apple Podcasts. They were making an episode a year ago about Raphael Lavoie, and they talked about how he played for the Halifax Mooseheads, and then they brought up other Halifax Mooseheads of the past. And I remember specifically hearing about scouts and Halifax Moosehead personnel who believed that Nico Hischier was the best Halifax Moosehead to come out of that system over the past few years. And that's some crazy, crazy praise, especially when you take a look at Nathan McKinnon, you take a look at Drew Ann, you take a look at some other really good guys guys who have been in that system, like Timo Meyer, for example, too. Not to mention Nikolai Ehlers, who also was there, and my goodness, Halifax was absolutely stacked, and Hishier is, according to some people, the best Halifax Moosehead to have played in that system, so going into the long-term future, that definitely bodes well. Sure, maybe today, people would say that Elias Pettersson, or Kale McCarr, or Mira Heiskanen would probably be a more valuable pickup at number one overall than Nico Hishier, but at the same time, man, this guy's a great player. He's in the military, for crying out loud. How cool is that? He's keeping up his physicality, keeping up his shape, and allowing himself to do new things that he's probably supposed to be doing anyway, because if it's mandatory, then hey, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. But that's our little video here on Nico Hishier. I just wanted to throw that out there. It's a weird topic, but it's a chill commentary here, so don't expect anything super serious coming out of this stuff. We're gonna have a little bit of a serious video coming on later today, though, so stick around for that at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this Hishier video. Search for that Shrosa 99. And bye. <laughs>